Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, let's do a book haul. All right, so I have acquired quite a few books since my last book haul. And we've got a variety of genres here, so I'm gonna to try to break it up by genre. I wanted to thank Clever Fox for so kindly sending me one of their beautiful, beautiful planners. So if you don't know Clever Fox, they do really amazing planners where you can get a whole bunch of different types of planners, like budget planners or food planners or whatever things you like planning around. They have planners for all of those different things. I just got the standard weekly planner Planner, which I absolutely love. The cool thing about Clever Fox is they don't necessarily have planners with specific dates in them. They allow you to kind of buy the planner whenever you want and fill in whatever months you want to track in that specific planner. You start with kind of these blank pages that ask you about sort of your, your life vision. What are you looking to accomplish over the next couple months? What are you grateful for? What are you passionate about? All of those sorts of things. And then you actually get into talking specifically about goals and they kind of break out the goals in different categories. So you can see you have health and fitness, personal finance, family and friends, relationships, all of those sorts of goals, which is really fun. And then I actually already started using these planners for my monthly planning. And then after every month, you have a monthly review where you talk about what were some of my biggest wins? What were some things I learned? So it's really cool because it kind of prompts you to really reflect. And they have, of course, the weekly planner section where you can fill in kind of the date that that week is for and then it has uh, separate sections for like habits that you want to keep track of personal to-do list this week's wins so I really think that this is an awesome planner it even came with kind of a how it works guide to kind of walk you through how to fill out this planner and then finally they also sent me some of these adorable stickers that make planning even more fun. Thank you so, so much Clever Fox for sending me all of this. I absolutely love this planner. This video is not sponsored by them. This is just an honest review of the planner. And if you wanna check out some more information or see what other planners they have, I will link all of that information down below in the description box for you to check out. All right, so let's move on to the books. And as always, I want to start with fantasy. So we're gonna start with a couple of fantasy books that were so, so kindly sent to me by the publishers. First being The Last Blade Priest by W.P. Wiles. This is being published by Angry Robot in July. It comes out on July 12th. And this one sounded really, really cool. It sounds like it's a standalone fantasy novel. And it says, three between the old and the new, three below the mountain. The priest, trained to kill for God, now fighting for survival in a religion tearing itself apart. The builder, son to a traitor, now ordered to spy on those who overthrew his land. The child, protected, lied to, now learning the truth. I just think that that sounds really intriguing and I always love checking out fantasy standalones. I am really hoping that I love this. I'm hoping it kind of delivers on the political intrigue that I'm looking for and that I think I'll get out of this. So I'm really, really excited to tell you guys what I think about this one. We also have The Stardust Thief by Chelsea Abdullah. So this one comes out next month, May, and I'm really, really excited for it. It sounds like it's this Middle Eastern inspired fantasy. It says, embark on an epic journey across sun-dazzled sands and through ancient ruins in this sparkling Arab-inspired debut from the most incredible new voice in epic fantasy. Love it, I'm so excited. I love checking out just super unique worlds and different types of fantasy worlds based out of different areas of the world. I just think that that's really fun to explore. Really, really excited to check this one out and thank you so much to Orbit for sending this to me. We also have Army of the Cursed by Kareem Solomon. So this one is actually a self-published novel that's already published and this was an SF, SPFBO finalist. Oh, I think I said that right. And I'm really, really excited to check it out. It sounds great and it has really good reviews. It says, everybody knew the cursed were coming. Nobody knew how to defeat them. The Granians thought that they were ready to face demons in battle, but when the foretold war of the last day begins, one fact becomes clear. The doom of mankind is just a matter of time. Now its fate rests in the hands of a hapless trio. A mage's apprentice who relies on her wits rather than magic. A princess who seeks the ultimate weapon against demons, but first she has to survive 
survive the turmoil of civil war, and a warrior whose swordplay could prove more useful against a threat graver than the bandits infesting his village. Can the three unite and put aside their differences before it is too late? The entire human race is already on the brink of extinction. How cool. I'm super excited to check this one out, and thank you so much to the author for sending this to me. And then finally, the last one that I received so kindly from the publisher was Electra by Jennifer Saint. This is the author who wrote Ariadne, and that was one that I really, really have been wanting to check out. But when I saw that this book was coming out this year, I was super excited because I've been really wanting to check out more of these sort of mythology retellings. I think it's definitely a trend right now in publishing and I'm not mad about it. I just don't know a whole lot about any mythology, and I'm definitely interested in learning more about it. So this one says it is the reimagining of the story of Electra, one of Greek mythology's most infamous heroines. So I'm super excited to check it out. It's not too, too long, and this one comes on sale next week. So definitely excited to share my thoughts with you all on Electra. I forgot one. So Red Hook Publishing was so, so kind to send me Kaikei by Vaishnavi Patel. I am so excited to have this book. It is one of my most anticipated of the entire year. I think it sounds stunning. It is based on this character from the Indian epic, the Ramayana. So I just, oh, this sounds amazing. It's already been getting fantastic reviews. I cannot wait to get to it. And apparently this character in the Ramayana is kind of this villainous queen character. So I'm super pumped to see her side of the story and to get kind of that inside view of like a supposed villain. So very, very pumped and thank you so, so much to Red Hook for sending this to me. Another fantasy book that I went ahead and got because I love the UK edition of this book so, so much. It is A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. I have tried to read a YA fantasy book by this author and it didn't work quite as well for me. I just didn't find it super memorable, but I'm really excited to check out how this author writes adult fantasy. I'm very intrigued. I know a couple people who have been reading this and I've been seeing some good reviews, some good buzz about it. It sounds like it's this very kind of romantic, magical fantasy story. So I'm excited. I'm hoping I love this and I hope that the inside of it is as beautiful as the outside. I mean, look at that beautiful cover. So stunning. I also grabbed The Mask of Mirrors by M.A. Carrick because when I asked you all what books you think that I would love the most, like what is the one book you would recommend to me, I had several people comment about The Mask of Mirrors and I feel like with that many people telling me I would enjoy it, I've seen Angela over at Literature Science Alliance, absolutely love this book. I've seen Abby over at Abby Salter, absolutely love this book. So I'm very intrigued. I know that it didn't work for Liana <laughs> over at Lena's Library, but maybe it'll work for me. So I'm really excited to check it out. It is quite chunky, and apparently it's a lot of political maneuvering, which is something I always love. So definitely excited to hopefully love this one. I also grabbed Gallant by V.E. Schwab because I typically really, really enjoy V.E. Schwab's books. I really have enjoyed everything I've read from her, besides maybe her middle grade series, The City of Ghosts. That one was fine, it was cute, but it wasn't anything super memorable for me. And I know that this one reads a little bit younger, so I'm curious to see if I enjoy it uh, as much as I enjoy her other books. I've heard it's very gothic. I'm definitely planning on trying to read this in October, kind of around spooky season, because it sounds like it's kind of this gothic house that this character is exploring. It just sounds kind of spooky, atmospheric. I like that kind of stuff, so hoping I enjoy it. I also grabbed The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms by N.K. Jemisin. So I have read two previous books by N.K. Jemisin, The City We Became, so it's called, and The Fifth Season. And neither of them were totally for me. However, I feel like the things I've heard about the Inheritance trilogy specifically with like all of the themes of gods and that kind of world building, it sounds the most appealing to my like personal preferences in fantasy. So I feel like if I'm going to enjoy N.K. Jemisin, this is the series I would probably enjoy. So this is kind of like my last hurrah with N.K. Jemisin. I'm really hoping that it works for me, but I feel like if it doesn't, I think I just have to accept that her style may not work for me totally. So I'm really hoping I love this um, because everything I've heard about it makes it sound so cool. 
I also have Unraveling by Karen Lord. I've heard a lot about Karen Lord from Angela over at Literature Science Alliance, and when I saw this at my local used bookstore, I just grabbed it. Um, really intriguing cover. I think that this is kind of a mystery, like detective mystery novel with like a fantasy twist on it, and I've heard it gets a little confusing. So I'm a little bit like nervous for it, but you never know. You just never know with like a new author that you haven't read from before. Like maybe that author's style just totally clicks for me and I'm, I'm hoping for the best from Karen Lord. Uh, so really, really hoping I enjoy this one. I also got The Tiger and the Wolf by Adrian Tchaikovsky, which has such a cool cover. It's so shiny. I love it. Uh, this is actually the May shelf space pick, and I am co-hosting with Alan over at the Library of Alexandria. So we will be reading this book together, and then towards the end of the month, we will probably have a live show to discuss it with everyone who does join in to read. So I'm really excited because I read Guns of the Dawn by Adrian Tchaikovsky earlier this year, and it instantly became one one of my favorite fantasy books. So I'm really hopeful that I'm going to enjoy this because I think that his writing style is just, it, it works for me. I'm also interested to just see his other fantasy books. I know he does a ton of sci-fi and some of his sci-fi is I think more popular than his fantasy, but I really liked Guns of the Dawn. So I'm excited to pick this one up and see if I love it. I also got The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea by Axie O, which I actually have already read and I do have a review of that I will link down below. I did a batch review with a couple new releases and this was included in that. This was fine. It was pretty good. I enjoyed the writing and I enjoyed the world building a lot in this one. I just wanted like more from it. I wanted to dive deeper into it. I, this isn't a review, so I won't go into my detailed thoughts. But yeah, this this for me was just okay, but I absolutely adore this cover and I just cannot, I cannot part with it because it's so beautiful. I, I do love this cover, so definitely recommend checking this one out. I know a lot of people have been loving it. From the Fairy Loot adult subscription, that is my first book subscription box that I've ever subscribed to. And the first book that came with it is The Atlas Six by Olivia. Blake. So this one was the TikTok sensation last year. Everybody and their mother was reading the Atlas Six. So I'm excited to finally be checking this out. I know it was first self-published and then was picked up by Tor and this is now the Tor version. Uh, I'm excited. I'm really, really excited for this. The original cover was black with the gold accents. Um, I like this white, uh, but the sequel is also white. <laughs> so I'm hoping that Fairy Loot does a, another design for the sequel that's black. Because <laughs> I like having like the white and the black. Anyways, whatever. This is a beautiful book. I love the sprayed edges and the um, end papers are stunning. It's, I guess, all the characters in this. I guess it's six competing characters, and if they win this thing, then they get to go to the Library of Alan... <laughs> I just at Library of Alexandria. <laughs> then they get to go to the Library of Alexandria. Um, so anyways, it sounds like it's gonna be a good time. I've heard a ton of very mixed reviews. <laughs> so we'll see if uh, this polarizing book ends up working for me. I also grabbed from my local used bookstore, The Wolf's Call by Anthony Ryan, and I, <laughs> I thought that this one was the sequel to Blood Song when I saw it. It doesn't have, it just says a Raven's Blade novel, so it doesn't have like the number that it is in the series. It's This is not even the same series as Blood Song. I have Blood Song and I've been planning to pick it up for a while now and I've heard amazing things about Blood Song. Not so much about the rest of that series, but amazing things about Blood Song. So I've been wanting to check it out and was like, oh, there's the sequel, might as well pick it up. Oh. This is the spinoff series. <laughs> so if I want to continue and read the spinoff series, I have the book now, yay. <laughs> I also grabbed Deep Light by Frances Harding. So this one, I'm not even gonna try to lie to you. This was completely a cover buy. Do you see this cover? It's so cool. The spine's beautiful. Like this is just such a pretty cover. I didn't even know when I picked it up, like what genre, <laughs> what it was about at all. Apparently this is YA and it's like fantasy horror help me in. I love that. It says an electrifying story about a friendship as dark and dangerous as the ocean and a journey as treacherous as the gods themselves. 
Ooh. So I haven't heard anyone talk about this, but it has the most beautiful cover. Then I couldn't resist. I did end up getting the Fairy Loot editions of the Diviners series. So uh, I'm gonna hold them up individually. So first that starts with the Diviners by Libba Bray, which they all have the, the black sprayed edges. And then when you open it, they have the little like design on the front, which is cool. Um, I love these editions and the reason I went ahead and got them. I haven't read the series yet. I've heard amazing things about this series and it's been one that I've really wanted to check out. But I've, <laughs> this is gonna sound so bad. I've been hesitating to check it out because I really don't like the original covers and they, they like kept changing the cover design through the series. So they never like had matching covers. And it just wasn't like super aesthetically pleasing <laughs> covers. So when they came out with these fairy loot ones, I was like, yeah. That's that's gonna make me read it for sure because they're so so pretty. Um, so I'm very excited to finally be checking this out. Um, and I again I've heard amazing things. It's YA paranormal fantasy um, takes place in our world in like the 1920s. So it's like this really fun kind of period fantasy with like paranormal stuff going on. So very excited to check this out. I absolutely love these editions. All right, and then let's talk the sequels that I picked up. So I did pick up The Shadow Saint by Gareth Honorhan. So I have The Gutter Prayer by this author, and I hate doing this where I buy the sequel before I read the first book, but I just have such a good feeling about The Gutter Prayer. I think I'm going to love it. It sounds totally up my alley. Like it has like paranormal stuff. It's like high fantasy. It's like multi-perspective. It, it just sounds so good. So I just, I went and I caved and I saw this for not a lot of money at my local used bookstore. It was like, well, when I inevitably read The Gutter Prayer and I enjoy it, hopefully, I can just go right into the sequel. So very excited for this. I also grabbed Hogfather and Thief of Time by Terry Pratchett, the fourth and fifth Discworld Death Collection books. Um, I have been, I've had mixed feelings about the Death Collection. I enjoyed, uh, the first one, Mort. And then Reaper Man was good still. I enjoyed that overall, but the ending was a little weird. And then the third book, I ended up DNFing. I was not into that one. So I've heard Hogfather's the best. It's death as Santa Claus. So I feel like I want to read this at Christmas time. And then The Thief of Time. I will finish up the series with these two books. So very excited for those. And I love, love these editions. If you don't know where to get them, you can get them on Blackwell's which I will link down below. I also grabbed Home and The Night Masquerade, both in the Binti trilogy. This is the second and third book. I've already finished these. I've talked about Home in a previous video. I will be talking about The Night Masquerade in another one. I really enjoyed this series. I thought it was really good. I liked the writing style. I liked the world building, the culture in it. It was just really engaging throughout. Like I really enjoyed it. So highly recommend checking this out. Then of course I had to pick up Age of Death and Age of Empire. I've already read Age of Death. I just have to read Age of Empire, this last book in the Legends of the First Empire series. And if you've been watching literally any of my videos, any of them for the past like two months, you will know how I feel about this series. I'm obsessed with it. I love it. I love it. I love it. It's going to be one of my favorites. I already know it. It's so good. So very excited about these. All right, now let's chat about the other books that I bought that are not fantasy, that are like thrillers, contemporaries, whatever other genres. So first I wanna show you my Stephen King editions that I went ahead and got. I love these new editions. I know that there used to be those like rainbow editions of Stephen King's books that went out of print and you can't get them anymore, but they're doing these new ones that have like rainbow spines. They're so pretty. So I got Misery because this is one of the highest priority Stephen King books that I really want to read. I also grabbed The Shining because I have read this one and I loved it. Like this is one of my favorite Stephen King books. Highly recommend. And then Salem's Lot is my next Stephen King read. So I'm very excited to have these three. So I'll continue to collect in this edition as I need to read more Stephen King books. So very excited about these. I also grabbed One for the Money by Janet Ivanovich. So this is the first book in the Stephanie Plum series. And the Stephanie Plum series has been recommended to me by a couple people like outside of the booktube life. Uh, my aunt <laughs> loves this series. And then one of my best friends 
loves this series. It sounds very funny. It sounds like it's all mystery novels. It's a huge, huge series, but it just sounds like such quick, fun, engaging reads. And apparently the main character of Stephanie is fantastic. So I'm really excited to finally check this out. I know it's very popular, but just not really talked about on booktube. So excited to check it out. I also grabbed The Paper Palace by Miranda Cowley Heller. I saw that this was one of the finalists from the Goodreads Choice Awards last year. It was a Reese's Book Club pick. I don't know much about it. I'm going based off of kind of the, the rave reviews that's been getting from people. Uh, apparently people are really, really enjoying this one. It sounds like it's a hard hitting contemporary novel and sometimes those end up becoming my absolute favorites. So I'm very excited to check this one out. I also grabbed Finley Donovan is Killing It. I am in a book club outside of booktube and this is the pick for May. So I grabbed it. I'll be reading it very soon. I've heard nothing but good things. Everyone seems to be enjoying Finley Donovan as a character in this funny kind of witty murder mystery novel. So very excited to check it out. I also grabbed One by One by Ruth Ware. This is my last chance with Ruth Ware. I have only liked Turn of the Key and that one even I didn't like the ending. So this is my last chance. This is one that I feel like I'll enjoy based off of like the premise. I think someone in this group has face blindness and they're kind of like stranded on this snowy mountain and somebody is a murderer, something like that. I, it sounds good. It's like a closed circle mystery novel. I like those. So if I were to like any Ruth Ware novels, it would be this one. So this is my last chance with her. If I don't like it, I'm done. I'm done with Ruth Ware. And then I grabbed the Midnight Library by Matt Haig. I've already read this. I already have a review of it that I will link down below. I overall thought that this was pretty good. And then I grabbed A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. This Penguin Clothbound edition was actually at my local used bookstore. So I grabbed it because I'm collecting these now and I totally want to read this at Christmas time. I'm so excited for it. So that is this book haul. Did you see any books that you have any thoughts about? What did you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to, and I will see you all in my next one. Bye. Thank you.